Storm on the Island by Seamus Heaney is a fantastic poem that tells of the story of a raging storm as it attacks the community below. But of course, this poem is threaded with the undertones of the political turmoil of the 1960s. But before we start looking at the poem, it's important to look at Seamus Heaney's life and think about what life was like growing up on such a remote location on a farm in Northern Ireland in the middle of nowhere. He describes this farm as tremendously secure and it's this sense of security and isolation that we can see dominated throughout the poem. And although this poem is also about the conflict of the IRA at the time, Heaney said that it is not a political protest. It's a way of giving a sense of the world through a temperament. And that is to say that this is a true expression of his feelings as a child and what it was like growing up on that farm in such a troubling time. Heaney said that all of his works aim to address, amplify and analyse simply exactly what happened. And Storm on the Island does that so well. So let's reflect and summarise. Seamus Heaney's poem is a dramatic monologue told from the perspective of a villager on a remote island. It focuses on a raging storm that fiercely attacks the community below. On a deeper level, this poem reflects the physical and psychological effects of conflict influenced by the political troubles in Ireland during the 1960s. Now let's remind ourselves of the poem itself. We are prepared. We build our houses squat, sink walls in rock and roof them with good slate. This wizened earth has never troubled us with hay, so... As you see, there are no stacks or stooks that can be lost, nor are there trees which might prove company when it blows full blast. You know what I mean. Leaves and branches can raise a tragic chorus in a gale so that you listen to the thing you fear, forgetting that it pummels your house too. But there are no trees, no natural shelter. You might think that the sea is company, exploding comfortably down on the cliffs, but no. When it begins, the flung spray hits the very windows, spits like a tame cat turned savage. We just sit tight while the wind dives and strafes invisibly. Space is a salvo. We are bombarded with the empty air. Strange, it's a huge nothing that we fear. So now let's look at the poem a little closer and see if we can build on our understanding of the poem and the poet's intention. Storm on the Island begins with a resolute determination, we are prepared. The very simplicity of the sentence encapsulates a confident tone right from the very outset. It creates the image of the villagers ready and waiting for this reoccurring attack. The pronoun we really gives off this sense of togetherness and unity, denoting that collective and cultural voice of solidarity. This is a community working together to face the common enemy. In the next part of the line, Heaney immediately conveys the images of the villagers working hard together to build their houses, sinking walls deep into the ground and solidifying roofs with good slate. Here, Heaney further presents this strength of the community, which mirrors the strength and resilience of the houses they build. We get a real sense of their domestic certainty here, which is all very comforting and reassuring, but of course this changes as the poem progresses. It is not until the next line that we start to question the strength of this community. The wizened earth is shriveled and dry, meaning that the landscape is bleak and inhospitable, allowing what we might consider substance without luxury. This is emphasised in the description of no stacks, meaning haystacks or piles of hay, or stooks being the wheel the hay forms when rolled onto the fields. Some say that Heaney conveys a somewhat sarcastic tone with the idea that the earth has never troubled the villagers with hay, meaning that the earth doesn't provide them with the bare essentials needed to survive. 
In the next line, Heaney reminds his readers that nature is not a friend of the villagers as there are no trees which might prove company. This word company is also repeated later on in the poem when Heaney reminds us that the sea is also not company. Here, he suggests that nature and humanity cannot live harmoniously, an idea that we can explore later on in the poem. Blast is the first really violent word in the poem and it's the first of many threaded throughout. Heaney uses this violent and militant language to replicate the savage brutality of the attacking storm and, ultimately, the conflict that occurred during the 1960s. And then we get that wonderful colloquialism. You know what I mean? There are a few conversational phrases in this poem, and it's because of these that we, as the reader, feel fully immersed in the action ourselves. It's as if the speaker takes us by the hand and guides us through the scene, right into the very heart of the poem. The important change in the pronouns from we to you and I support this. You and I are now part of this community. We're a warrior villager fighting against the storm. The tension definitely starts to rise in the next lines alongside the rising chorus in the gale. Remember also that Heaney uses basic pentameter throughout, but litters this poem with varying feet. We are presented with trochaic and spondaic and so on, which breaks up the iambic rhythm. The breaks and changes in meter are unpredictable and mirrors the unpredictability of the storm. Like the language and rhythm, the storm is starting to get out of control, reflecting humanity's powerlessness against the fighting storm. And in the rising chaos, we forget that the storm still pummels the house. The repeatedly violent attack shows again how aggressive the storm can be with our survival at risk, as Heaney reminds us that there are no trees or shelter to protect us. Also note the pronoun your. It is now your house that is pummeled by the storm. You individually are now under attack. Heaney repeats the idea that nature is not our friend in the next line by warning us about the sea, reminding us again that it is not company, but instead uses the oxymoron exploding comfortably to accentuate the unpredictable brutality of nature. Of course, exploding is in reference to bombs, making this image even more deadly. And then, after the colon, we are hit with the but no. This quite literally stops us mid-sentence and acts as a warning for us to stay cautious and prepared for the imminent attack. In this next line, Heaney gives us the simile, like a tame cat turns savage, to show us that nature may seem calm and controlled, similar to a harmless pet cat, but is, in fact, in complete control of the situation and can attack at any moment. The savage in this description stresses how deadly and almost uncaring nature can be when attacking the villages below. Heaney starts to use sensory language to add to the chaos of the images he creates at the start of the poem, particularly through the sounds he adds through the sibilant S, spray hits the very windows, spits, savage, and the alliterative T, spits like a tame cat turned in this line. It's great when you read it out loud. The S sound replicates the spray and splash of the sea, accompanied by the harsher T sound, making the reader actually spit out the words, spit like a tame cat turned savage, as they clash together, making the tension rise quite dramatically. Sounds are another brilliant addition to the next line in the alliterative W. We sit tight while the wind dives and strafes invisibly. Here, the alliteration provides airy sounds, replicating the wind as it takes on the characteristic of an attacking plane, watching it dive and shoot its enemy. Again, space as a salvo gives the impossible image of the guns being shot in all directions, although we're reminded that it's only empty air bombarding us. This paradox creates an image of the vast absence of anything physically real attacking the villagers as they sit tight, squatting inside their homes, safe for now against the storm, hoping to survive. Let's just take a pause here and reflect on the imagery he creates through this rich and vivid description of the villagers building their houses to the attacking force of the storm. 
This, accompanied by the irregularity of sejura and enjambment, matched with the carefully placed sounds of the bombs, the sibilants, the assonants, really heighten this chaos and the conflict. It shows the uncertainty and how unpredictable the next attack could be. By this point in the poem, we feel incredibly overwhelmed, just like the villagers sitting tight and waiting for the storm to pass. It's not until the final line that we can stop, take a breath and reconsider our position. Heaney ends his poem with a powerful paradox. The very plain and familiar adjective huge becomes interesting when it's used to describe nothing. Perhaps the end gives us the confidence that we may have lost in the midst of the poem, reminding us that it's just wind and rain. Essentially, it's nothing. We could potentially defeat it one day. Or perhaps this final line just accentuates the central message of this poem, that humanity is powerless to nature. Either way, we're left feeling relieved that the storm is over for another day. There's so much more we could say about each line of this poem, but remember, this is a comparative element of your exam, and therefore we need to think more about big ideas as opposed to analysing line by line. So let's look at the big ideas of this poem. First, Heaney highlights the strength and solidarity of a community. He really gives that sense of togetherness right from the very start. Next, Heaney conveys the brutal violence of the attacking storm. We see that through the language, through the sensory images and through the sounds. Heaney presents the ultimate power and unpredictability of nature through the simile, the metaphor, the images and the narrative of this poem. Heaney emphasises the chaos and overwhelming effects of a conflict that just cannot be controlled. And finally, Heaney shows the physical and psychological effects of a tyrannical force. Now, it's the big ideas that are essential when you're going to write your comparative response, because you start here when thinking about other poems of comparison. So, for example, we look at the first point, Heaney highlighting the strength and solidarity of a community, and we think of other poems we can fit that into. Perhaps not in Ozymandias, perhaps the opposite in Kamikaze. Look again at the second point, Heaney conveys the brutal violence of the attacking storm. Now look at the other poems. Do any of them convey a violence or a brutal attacking of a storm? The prelude perhaps? Maybe even exposure? And so on. Definitely do feel inspired to go and research further about this poem and Heaney himself. I'll stop there for now, but do make sure you check out some of my other videos based on the power and conflict poetry. Enjoy! Thank you.